welcome to my podcast on real relationships. My name is Sophie Poisson and I am a relationship expert, international speaker and best-selling author of You're the Half. I've decided to start this podcast because, in my opinion, relationships are currently not being portrayed as what they really are. Whether you're watching the soaps or the news or what you're being fed on social media, the perception given to people is wrong and my aim is to talk about what really happens. So I'm interviewing people from the real world who talk about their own stories and listen to what they've got to say, what they think, what they've done, are doing, or what they've gone through, as opposed to creating expectations that are warped and of something that actually doesn't exist. I may not agree with everything that is said by my guest, but it is their chance to express their opinions and their stories. So here today we have Cram. Hi, Cram. Hi. Thank you for being on. Um, first of all, what I'd like you to do is just tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay. I'm a middle-aged man. Um, I've come across to the UK uh, possibly about 25 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And so what we're going to talk today is about getting through tough situations in a marriage, which is pretty much your story. So... From what I know, you you met very young with your wife. That's correct. We met um, while we were still at school age. Okay. So 15, 16. 15, 16. And then you had to get married. What do you mean by had to? Well, whilst um, we, well, basically what happened was my wife, my girlfriend fell pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, And um, so we got married. Fair enough. So you have kids. How many kids have you got? I have two children, two, two children. girls. Okay. Yeah. So at the start of your career, you were in the military. Um, well, where I, in South Africa, you had to do uh, two years national service when you left school. So okay. yes, I had to do that. Yeah. And how long were you there for? Well, you do two years initially, and then you do camps uh, every year, similar to TA camps in the British military. So I did another three camps after my two years. Okay, so you, you did this as in, you know, kind of because you had to, not as a professional career. That's correct. Yeah, I, I did it. You, you had to do it. Yeah, you know, it, it was a duty. You could either go in the military or you could uh, do your two years where you could spend four years sitting in jail as a conscientious objector. So fair enough. So you'd rather go and do that. Get However, yeah. PTSD. Tell us more about that. Um, basically, on one of my camps, um, my daughter was actually three years old at the time. My my first daughter, um, and I was on a camp over Christmas, which is uh, summer in South Africa, mm-hmm. and we had some pretty horrific um, situations. I won't go into detail on them. But um, the one involved a, a three-year-old girl who was murdered, mm-hmm. uh, and um, she was basically necklaced. We she had a burning tire put around her neck, and she was killed that that way. Um, and of course, you know, I I just kept thinking of my three-year-old mm-hmm. daughter, um, and that had a pretty profound effect on me. I think to be fair, I mean, even if you <laughs> don't have kids or even if it'd been a boy or whatever, I think it would have an effect on anyone to, to witness yeah. such a thing. So you suffered from that for a while, from what I understand. I did. I mean, for about 18, uh, you know, uh, there was no, um, you, did, you, you didn't get any psychiatric help. Um, you just left your camp and went back to work. Mm-hmm. And for about 18 months, you know, I wandered around my work with a piece of paper, just arranging sports events because, you know, I just, I just couldn't do anything really. Mm-hmm. Um, I was lucky that, you know, they kept me on. Um, and, you know, it was, yeah, it was a pretty tough time though. And I wasn't a very nice person to be around because I felt very inadequate that we hadn't been able to stop the situation, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and, um, you know, so I, I tended to take it out on my wife and, you know, um, but yeah, it was, I mean, it was really tough uh, from, that was in 1991. And then um, it was only in, um, it was only after we got to the UK that I was actually able to celebrate Christmas again, because obviously in the UK, it's cold and, and wintry at Christmas, not hot and summery like in South Africa. So it was that difference that, you know, helped me to, to see Christmas as a good time again. Okay. And so you said you were taking it out on your wife. Tell us a bit more about that and how you affected your relationship with her, but maybe also with your kids. 
Okay, yeah, well, I mean, well, it's, my, my children were obviously very young, but I mean, I was just very difficult to live with, you know, I'd fly off the handle, um, I was, you know, you just, I, if, if, if anyone said anything to me, you know, I'd get these big feelings of inadequacy, you know, and then I would bottle them up and bottle them up and then, you know, would come out later, you know, um, and, you know, I'd, 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 just be, I'd just be a nightmare to live with, I was really terrible, you know, very unreasonable. So you've mentioned a few times about being inadequate. What, why exactly were you feeling inadequate about? Was it because you'd not be able to stop the situation or was it because yeah. the environment you were now in was so different? Well, I think, um, I think, I think it was, you know, it stemmed from, from the situation, you know, that's, and that wasn't the only one situation. That was the, the biggest one, but there were other issues, you know, similar things that had happened as well on, on the camp. But, um, you know, it was, um, it was, it was the fact that, yes, you know, we, we, we hadn't, you know, I, I hadn't been able to do something to protect that child, you know, or, you know, we, we hadn't got there in time, basically, you know, and it was just, you know, it, it just spilled over into everything, you know, and I just, I suppose, I retreat into myself, my feelings, you know, I, I shut down all my feelings. Um, and I still, I still do that now. Um, I was going to say, has it affected you forever, as it were? Yes, yes, yeah. it has, yeah. And have you, you ever know? sought hope? Now that you're in the UK and... Well, funny enough, you say that um, whilst in the UK, one of our neighbours drowned in their pond and um, I was a person that fished them out and tried to resuscitate them. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, didn't survive. Um, but it was after that that, you know, I, um, after, after that incident, I was offered psychiatric help and, you know, I laughed it off, you know, and said, you know, if you'd seen the things I'd seen, you know, you, this, is, well, this is nothing. You know, because obviously I've seen dead bodies before, yeah. and um, but it was only um, it was only after that I started getting flashbacks back to the military situations, you know, and um, so I did then go and you know I sat in front of someone, a doctor arranged for me to sit in front of a, a psychiatric nurse and talk through it with them, and I don't know if she believed the things I told her, you know. But, um, you know, I told her about my, my situations. I was completely open with her about everything I had seen and done. Um, and, you know, it, it, funny enough, that seemed to, <clears throat> that seemed to be uh, a point where I'd got over it all then, you know, and it's, it's been a lot better since then. You know, I've, I've learned to live and cope with it. So, yeah, that did help. Just that one meeting with him and, you know, and talking to someone who didn't know about it, you know, and, and someone completely, you know. Uh, Had to be a craving. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. And so you say that you then moved abroad. Do you mean over here or do you mean somewhere else? Uh, well, no, we, we, we were here for, we were here for, uh, um, you know, we were here for a number of years, but then um, my wife, we were involved in a car accident uh, just before 2000. And my wife was, it wasn't badly, didn't seem bad injured at the time. She had whiplash, but then that um, over the years, it turned out that she actually had um, quite, severe back problems, the lower back, which they put down to the accident. Mm -hmm. um, she had to have a back operation, um, you know, in 2010. And she was, she'd been in a lot of pain since. Um, and her pain team said to her that it was probably a good idea if she, um, if she went to a warmer climate and gave up work. Okay. Um, at the time, I was working for a corporate uh, company here in the UK. And I was offered the opportunity to go out to a West African country and run a company out there. Mm -hmm. Small, probably about thirty people, but you know I was the MD, so and it was on a three-year contract. So you know we jumped at the opportunity because it was a lot warmer than here, mm -hmm. and went and did it for three years, and it actually helped her a, a hell of a lot because um, because it's you know she was in a in a country where she could um, you know where we where, where, where she was she had heat on her back a lot and that helped her a lot. She wasn't there all the time because she, you know, a lot of her treatment was in the UK. So she'd come over as and when she could, you know, to, to get the treatment. And funny enough, it, it was really good for us because it was the first time in our lives that we'd just been us together, you know, without kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was really good for our relationship. We sort of found each other again. Now, I was going to say, prior to that, you also yeah. met somebody else. Ah, uh, yeah. Now... When we first came across to the UK, um, I actually met someone whilst I was at work, and I not um, well, you know, it's not proud of it, but yes, you know, I did have an affair with him, and um, obviously, my wife was very, very 
good about it, um, you know, and... and um, so tell she, us a bit more about that, if you don't mind. I know that you're not proud of it, but it's something that yeah. happens quite a bit. And yeah. I think that, personally, I think there's a number of reasons and there's a number of different type of affairs and cheating, inverted brackets. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what your relationship was like at the point where you met that person, that other person? Yeah, I can. I mean, we'd come across to the UK. We hadn't been here long. We were in our, in our first two years, um, you know, so we were very, very unsettled. Um, and, you know, with my other issues that I was having, you know, um, I, you know, yeah, you know, I think I, I was having some low points. And um, with us both being unsettled, um, you know, I turned to someone else. And, you know, they made, they made me feel good about myself and, you know, made me feel better. And how long did you have the affair for? Um, it was about six months. Six months. And, uh, yeah. And then, you know, and then it's, it worked. It's, it's sort of fizzled out. But then obviously, you know, it, it had repercussions after that. So you how know. did your wife find out? Did you tell her or was it one of those? Um, well, I did. I did. You know, she, she had an idea. And, um, you know, then the other partner found out as well. So it was a bit of a mess. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, and then, you know, I kept some, certain things hidden from her, though, for quite a while afterwards, um, which, you know, really didn't help. So, you know, that's, um, you know, it's, it caused trouble again further down the line when I did admit to certain other things, you know, that had happened. So. And you obviously worked through it. I take it it wasn't easy. How did you manage to work through it? Well, how we actually managed to work through it was we actually um, we actually went to church. Mm -hmm. um, we tried we tried going to relate, um, but we couldn't really afford relate because even though it's charity, they want money, um, and we didn't have that money. But you know, we um, we were lucky that we um, so, you know, some family members were at a, a, what it's called just a, a Christian church. You know, it's not denominational. And we went to that and um, we <laughs> had quite a charismatic uh, pastor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were obviously trying to work through these things and we were tearing each other apart and threatening to leave, you know, all the time and, and get out. And it was just, it was really bad. I mean, it, it has affected our children quite a bit. But this pastor sat us down you know, one on each side of him and turned to us and said, do you love him? And my wife said, yes. Turned to me and said, do you love her? I said, yes. He said, well, get it together. Just sort it out then. Mm. So because, that, but, you know, he said, you know, make sure that you've got God in your relationship rather than, um, you know, rather than all the materialistic things that people have in the world. Um, and, you know, you know why you, you married each other because you loved each other. You, you know, you loved each other when you met. So just sort it out because you love each other. So mm -hmm. that, I mean, yeah, that, that has got us through it, really. That was, you know, and it was very, very simple. It wasn't, wasn't a wishy-washy thing, you know. Yeah. It wasn't, um, you know, oh, tell me about your feelings, tell me about it. He wasn't interested in any of that. It was just basically, you know you love each other. That's why you're together. So sort it out because love is what holds you together. So Fair enough. And so you obviously then went away and came back. So you said to me, you came back having lost almost everything. So what happened? Yeah, basically the, the country we went to in West Africa is very reliant on petrol, petro dollars because it's a petro economy. Mm -hmm. um, and we went out there in 2013, which was fine. But in 2014, the, um, the uh, price of fuel, you know, oil dropped drastically. So all of a sudden we couldn't get money out of the country um, because there was no money there. We were, I was paid in dollars, but I couldn't get the money out of the country because there was no dollars in the country to get it out. Right. Um, so it, was, it, it just sat in a bank there waiting for dollars to be allocated to get it out. So of course we had a house in the UK, um, credit cards, you know, from before we'd gone, two cars um, and um, other, you know, other, other bits and pieces that we had to pay. Um, so, you know, all of a sudden I couldn't pay those bills. So they, you know, I took a lot of talking to people, you know, companies and people here to keep the, you know, to keep the house, to keep everything, um, and to keep them updated on where the money was. And, you know, I've been back now for just over three years, coming on three years, and I've still got some of the money still stuck there. I mean, I've got a lot of it out. Yeah. But there is yeah. some stuck there because it's just had to wait to allocate dollars. So, 
you know, we almost lost everything. You know, again, that's very focusing because, you know, that can cause issues because people obviously, yeah. you know, when money's tight, it causes arguments. Um, but we realized that, you know, if we didn't have anything else, at least we had each other, you know, so. And you obviously, as you say, you're now rebuilding your lives here. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that you said to me that I find quite interesting is she still believes in me, supports me, even though I make mistakes and let her down. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Um, well, basically, you know, through everything, you know, through the affair, through the fact that, I, you know, I've moved to countries a few times, you know, um, and, you know, I've made mistakes business-wise, you know, and made mistakes. I, I don't think it was a mistake moving countries, but the fact that, you know, with the money issues, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get the money back here, that's, you know, but, you know, she still believes that I will I will provide every month, you know, and I will um, I will look after and, and, you know, and protect her, even though I've let her down so many times in the past, you know, she, you know, she really does love me. And that's, you know, I've, I've come to understand that, you know. And do you generally believe that you've let her down? I mean, I get the affair thing, but to be mm -hmm. honest with you, I've, I also believe that when these things happen, normally not both parties are to blame, mm -hmm. but sometimes they are and sometimes it's circumstances. It's not necessarily well, just your fault. And some of the things like the money thing, is it really your fault where you ended up in a country that you got stuck in? Or do you think that maybe because of what's happened, you're just kind of taking the blame for everything? Maybe that is, you know, thinking about it, maybe that is, maybe it's me, you know, it's my, um, the fact that I, you know, I feel I must provide. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's an old fashioned attitude these days, but obviously with my wife's back problems, she can't work. So, mm -hmm. you know, I do need to provide. Um, and um, yeah, I think it's, you know, generally it, it could be some of it is related to, you know, the issues my, in, the, in the military, you know, where that's my adequacy now is, you know, that I provide, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the provider, I do, you know, and, and I look after things. So it could be to do with that. But, you know, for me, obviously she can't work, so I have to. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think, yes, I think the affair was all my fault. Um, I do say that. Um, and um, I think as well that you know, with, mis with, with the mistakes and with the issues business-wise, I could uh, maybe I could have been a bit more clever. But you know, some things are already in control. I, I do agree. You know, I, I wasn't to know that the um, you know the oil price would drop and the money would be stuck in a bank overseas. You know, I, that that you can't be, you just can't m mitigate for. No, of course not. Mm. And if I was to talk to her right now, what would she say about you, do you think? I don't know. Hopefully she'd say he's okay. <laughs> or I, I don't know. I think, you know, I think she'd say that she loves me. Mm -hmm. I think she'd prove, she's proven that. You know, she demonstrated it time and time again. So, you know, and... So you looking back at your story, uh, obviously yes. it can only go back from, you know, strength from strength, really. You know, you kind of started... At, at the bottom and it all went wrong and then you've just like gone back up and gone back up and gone back up. What do you think the future holds? Well, I'd like to see us, you know, I'd like to see us in um, another 30 years time, you know, um, which would mean we'd been married for 60 years, you know, and I'd like to think that, you know, I'd like to think, you know, that we were, um, you know, that we were still together and we were still holding hands and still enjoying each other's company. That's what I'd like. And I'd like to, you know, I'd like to enjoy that. And in terms of you, do you think that maybe there's certain things that you need to sort out to feel better in yourself and maybe forgive yourself? Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm quite happy with where I am at the moment. You know, I'm quite happy with the fact that I, I, I work for myself generally. Um, you know, I'm quite happy with the person I, I am. You know, I've, I've been a business manager. I've, you know, I've, you know, and I've, I think I've, I've done the things I need to do to prove that I can do them. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm, I'm quite comfortable in my skin, you know, at the moment. Fair enough. And mm -hmm. if you had any advice for someone, you know, going through a difficult patch in their marriage like you did, mm -hmm. what would be your advice to them? Well, obviously, you know, obviously going to church helps a lot for me, mm -hmm. um, you know, because that's, that's, that, you know, it teaches you just good grounded lessons in, in life. Um, and I think just remember why you got married, you know, you got married because you love someone. So like we were told, you, you love each other. So work it out. You know, if you do truly love someone, you can work anything out. 
you know. And do you think that maybe that was a point of no return in your life in the sense that because you loved each other, but if one of you wasn't so sure anymore, would there have been a different outcome? There may have been. Yeah, there may have been if one of us wasn't that sure, you know. That we, because I do you know, think that sometimes, you know, um, things change over time because people change. But don't necessarily, you know, one of the things that you've described is that you've had all this hardship thrown at you, but you've always looked in the same direction. And sometimes with or without hardship, people start to look in different directions just mm-hmm. because the paths are taking them in different directions. Yeah, that's that's very true. You know, in a very sanitized um, and sort of easy environment that we tend to live in, you know, these days, especially in the Western world, um, you know, yes, there's a lot pulling on people all the time. You know, for attention. Um, you know, a lot of it's consu- a lot of it's consumerism. Um, you know, there's and you know, it's there is a lot of that to pull people apart. But then, I think if people, you know, truly love each other, um, then um, you know, they will stay together. But I think from what you said at the beginning, you know, when you look at Hollywood, yes. when you look at the stuff you're fed, and especially reality TV, which we all know isn't real, um, you know, people do get a very skewed um, idea of what a relationship is and what love really is, you know? Mm. I so, agree. And I think, you know, especially I see more in even younger people, they seem to pick a partner depending on what they look like or the, the job title, the status. And, and I'm generalizing here because some people a bit older do the same thing, but they generally lose strength. But that's not what it's about. And if you, once you have a successful marriage or relationship without marriage, you need to have things in common. You've got to have the same values. You've got yeah. to want to look at life in the same way. And as you just rightly pointed about consumerism yes obviously we all like to have nice stuff but we've got to sometimes remember that that's not what it's about exactly yeah i think that's i think i was lucky as a child because we were i was you know we were we were pretty poor my family was when we were children so you know so consumerism luckily has passed me by mm-hmm. um you know i couldn't afford it so i didn't have it so i don't miss it um but yes, definitely these days, you know, and when you talk about, you know, people go for looks and, they, you know, that's very evident in the way that you see people trying to, you know, the things that people do to themselves these days to, you know, to and what they think makes them look better when in reality it doesn't really, you know, you, know, you, and, you, only, have to look, you only have to look at some of the medical procedures people do, you know, and that very unfortunate lady a week or so ago who, you know, who died overseas, who, um, you know, having a, an implant. Oh, I didn't hear about that, but fair enough. No, no there was a lady that went to Turkey to have a, an, a, an implant in her buttocks and she died right. on the operating table. She had a heart attack, you know, so that's very, very unfortunate, you know. But I think the other thing as well is this wanting to look good all the time for this, that, or whatever reason. Obviously, I'm not saying that I want to look horrible all the time either. But yeah. I think people are seeking acceptance and more, and more importantly, they're seeking someone to complete them as opposed to like accepting themselves for who they are first. Having yeah. someone with you is not going to help if you don't accept yourself. That's very true. I mean, in South Africa, there used to be an advert for me- mental health that said, how can you love anyone if you don't love yourself? Mm. And that's, you know, that's very true. But unfortunately, in the, you know, the social media world we live in, a lot of people, you know, are going for, you know, it's it's all glamorizing themselves, you know, and you know they 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 do, um, you know, they, they they've always got to look the best, as you say, you know, they're always looking the best, they're always taking selfies, they're always trying to show where they are, the food they're eating, you know, the people they're hanging out with, and you know they rely on likes for that, you know, mm-hmm. and likes and and you know that's. That's not the real world, you know. It's not like when I was a kid and we hung around as, you know, as friends and, you know, and you, you had a few friends and that was it. You know, you, that was all you needed. You didn't need a, a hundred likes to say, you know, that your meal was good or that the place you went to was good, you know, or that your new hairdo was good, you know. Yeah. It's validation, isn't it, by default, yeah. as it were. Um, so, Cram, <laughs> do you have any regrets? Um, I think apart from, apart from the affair, No. Uh, someone once said to me, don't ever regret any of the things you have done, just regret some of the things you haven't done. So, you know, apart from the affair, no. You know, I have I like to think I've lived life quite to the full. I've had some good adventures, um, you know, and I've, 
you know, I've exceeded expectations of what I thought I would do, you know, so no, I, I, I don't really have regrets apart from the affair. I mean, the, the, the one thing with the affair is, you know, um, I would like to always have thought that, you know, to, with my, with my wife, you know, that, um, it's, you know, sorry, no, it doesn't matter. Sorry. I, I, I just like to think that, you know, I, I, I hadn't let it down and I think I let, did let it down there. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your story. Pleasure. Um, that's it for today. So if you enjoyed the show, then please subscribe and give us a review. And more importantly, come back next week. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.